Today, I want to speak with you about a feature in Bit that allows us to build an application with Bit. But first of all, let's start with a problem that I guess we are all aware of is often, you know, the company or the business we are working with spots a new business opportunity and they want to move fast. And whenever this happens, there's always a lot of those meetings, you know, on whether we want to add this uh, new business concern as a feature to an existing application, or maybe we need to create a new service or a new application to double down on that new business initiative. Often, you know, those, those ask a lot of meetings um, and the discussions usually revolve around the benefits of each approach, right? So for example, if let's say we, we maintain a CRM and we have a billing system. Now on top of that billing system, there is a requirement you know, for maybe building or adding UI for managing subscriptions, ability to do resales and other capabilities. Now we can always go to, you know, the, uh, the tried and true way of, Hey, let's build this as a new feature in existing application, because that existing application, uh, you know, there's already a lot of code there. So there's a lot of potential for usability, the CI pipeline set or tooling they'll set. And essentially the team will be focused because they're staying in the same repository in the same known place where all of the moving parts are well known. However, so the decision to separate to a different application or service also has a lot of benefits, especially early on. You can build a more specific solution for a problem, right? Uh, you have far more flexibility with tooling or conflicts. Maybe there's a different stack that works best for a specific use case. Uh, maybe there was a specific deployment type that will work well. Also, existing applications code base and build pipelines will not get expanded. So there's no side effects on other larger projects by introducing more code into them and potentially more maintenance down the line. This also means that we have zero coupling between business concerns because, you know, if I'm, I have a SaaS product, but I want to provide a feature for my customers to be resellers of my product. Does it have to be in the specific main SaaS does, or may, or as, as a new feature on the screen, or maybe it's best to have a separate app because it's a separate opportunity and eventually this will grow to its own business. So we have this less coupling between the various business concerns. And if we do decide to do any scaling for that initiative, because all things start small, but maybe something catches on uh, and we want to do refactoring later on and scale that cloud, then if we work in the same project or an existing project, then eventually we'll end up needing to do a lot of refactoring to the couple of things that we have now coupled. So often those decisions, you know, they tend to be a lot of friction between um, the, the, the business folks, product and engineering and design, because you need to align and agree on different requirements. And whenever you are in this part of needing to agree on something, uh, then sometimes the end result may not work for the benefit of the business requirement specific, because there's always, you know, R and D people will say, we have so much things to do and it will hurt our cadence if we're going to start decoupling because on the other end, product and business, we always want to move faster and we don't want to make any decisions that will break us later on, coupling too many things at once and so on. Now, what I want to. Uh, suggest here is maybe something that is almost like an, a happy middle in between. Um, essentially, uh, and let me start here with a demo. And this can be solved by finding a, a happy middle down when introducing Bit to the flow. Because in Bit, essentially, we maintain components, and each component, think about it like a cold container. You can put whatever code you need to implement whatever functionality in any bit component in any container, and that container can be an application or it can, you know, expose an application, any functionality feature, either backend, frontend, or whatever works for that specific case. And you can create those containers in any repositories, including existing ones. Now, in this example, this is a very basic repository with just a very stupid and rudimentary user service built with Express.js with a few APIs, you know, for get users, get single user, create a user and delete user, All right? It's very basic. There's not too facile, but what happens if I need to add another application? Do I need to go create a new repository, start building things inside of it and, you know, 
spreading my resources thin and add, you know, more CI pipelines to the flow and essentially decouple potentially even lose focus between what my team is currently doing and this new initiative that gets started. So instead, what we can do is um, initialize um, a bit workspace in this repository. So we can run bit in it. Bit in it is a very small command, just initialize a bit workspace within an existing repository. Sorry about that, my computer is being slow today. Bit will add two files to manage all of the code containers, all of the bit components in this repository, a bitmap file and a workspace JSON file. Now, in the workspace JSON, the only small thing I'm going to do right now is change my default scope and also all of my components, I'm going to change it in bits, meetups. Now, I want to create my new application. How do I do that with, uh, in here um, without having to fast and change or in introduce new monorepo tooling or completely refactor and change the build path of the project? It can just create a new component. And in this case, let's create a React application. So this create React app, user management. This component is a very basic mock React application that eventually we can connect and talk with the, uh, the user service that we build here. Now, as you see here, inside meetups, the user uh, management app, there is a new set of files. One of them, by the way, are TSX. So we about this here. Zoom in a little bit. And there is uh, an index file. Oh, sorry. The application file that loads the React application, the application root or how we want to mount the application, if we want to wrap it with any type of providers, uh, documentation for the application, and a few a specific configuration file for this application, so bit to know how to bundle and even deploy this small application to production. Now, before we get started, let's also add a few dependencies to the mix. Let's add types react, touch react downhill. So that's okay. And I will want to also in install a few more dependencies. Okay, so about my sorting. And let's run bit install, make sure that we have all the dependencies. Oh, sorry about that. Bit install, making sure we have all dependencies needed to include into this workspace for all the bit components. Now, as you see, the dependencies for bit and the dependencies for the project are also coupled. Bit will also install the dependencies inside package JSON. So the user service was still running. Uh, and I can still run my NPM scripts and everything. Bit will just run side by side with the existing application. <clears throat> it might take a few extra seconds for, to get all dependencies in order. They're all installed. Uh, now, the next step we want to do is to see that we can also compile the React application alongside the, no the Node.js microservice. And as you see, there, I did not have to modify and add and include any unique configuration files or modify types of configuration or any of the pre-existing configs from this service, because you can also see that this is a very basic JavaScript component um, in um, server. However, the component itself is TypeScript, and I did not have to go ahead and add TypeScript, uh, TS configs, and other tooling in order to build this uh, Bit component, because Bit takes care of that for us. Now, you will see that the user management app is configured, and now uh, we want to use this in our workspace in order to actually load this application and see it runs. So for this, we'll run bit use user management app. Essentially, because this bit component contains an application, we need to register that workspace JSON configuration file. Bit use command help us do that. And as you see, we see here that this got registered. Now, next, let's see our uh, bit app list. Bit app list allows us to see which um, applications are available for us in our Bit workspace. Again, decoupled from the Node.js service that is already here. And we see that there is an application exposed in this Bit component. So to run this, we will run Bit run user management app. Now behind the scenes, Bit will run a dedicated dev server for this application. And in this case, no matter how many applications I have running in bits here, bit will know to spin a dedicated dev server for each of them. 
Now that dev server can be a React dev server, Webpack, Angular dev server with Lola, and Express server with you know, JS. Whatever you decide for that particular component, uh, in this case, by default for the React uh, templates, I'm getting a Webpack client server. And let's go to Nucleus 3000. <clears throat> and we see our small application running, right? It's all the way here. We see our, our render this path here. This is a user service. I'm running a React application that we communicate with that service. I would also want to also have some shared code, right? With this very basic server and, uh, and application. And for that, we can just create a new bit component that will just emphasize and provide to us a way to share code. So I'll open the terminal and I can just do a bit, create node. And let's build a component to host the user entity. So we will know to align ourselves with what are the properties and requirements for communicating what is user between the uh, React application and Node.js server. And here, again, a new component is up and running here inside meetups, user. And I'm also able to share code very quickly and efficiently between my Node.js application and Bit. And that's also provide you with implementation. One second, for that real quick. Now with every new component that we add into our bit workspace here, we can extend not only the shared code that is used by components, but because this component in this workspace, I can also decide to, let's see, let's try to do this one. Right. Crossed user equals sorry, require and in bit meetup user. Now, this way, as you see, I'm able to have, let's, see, let's go to my user management app. And in my application in code, I can also add an import code, import user form bit meetup user. And this way, very quickly and efficiently, I can even build shared components to share code between my existing application and my bit application. The final piece of the puzzle is how do I get this very small application to be deployed? Because I don't have a deployment pipeline, deploy pipeline story for React applications in this repository. Now, for this, I mentioned earlier here in what defines this file, this React file defines essentially this component as a React application. And into this, I can add a dependency that we already use internally to deploy React applications to Netlify. So in order to get this started, first of all, I want to install and to introduce a new component here. It's installed my Netlify deployer. So essentially, even the functionality of a deploy pipeline can be also a component, and this also provides more ways to create reusability for different, uh, almost platform level uh, entities in your technology, in your stack, uh, and more options uh, to get more centralization up and running. So whenever you build a new component or a new application, you can add things that have been standardized before. Now, let's also quickly add everything needed for my Netlify deployment. So we'll add a quick TS5 here, and right. Uh, so essentially here, this is just a Netlify deployer that provides specific configuration. And uh, in order to use that, I'll go to my React application file and I'll import Netlify from Netlify. And that's what not list, I can just add Deploy and Netlify dot deploy. That's why I'm sorry if my computer gets awfully slow today. And this needs to accept Netlify. All right. And now, once in my build pipeline, I run the tag and export to export and version this component to BitCloud. This component will also get deployed and run in Netlify as an application. Let's go back quickly to our slide view. Essentially, once you start building 
your first application okay. with, with uh, this approach. You just create a new greenfield application as a bit component, put all the code and the implementation needed so that business concern in that bit component, create other components if you spot any cases for reusability, or maybe there are other functionalities inside the repository that you say, I wish I was able to use that in other application or other uh, functionality, you can just fit, create a new component, add that functionality there, import it in applications, in bit components. However, it's needed. There is essentially a zero setup overhead when you're trying to either build a new application or extend a new application with this type of flow. In our case, we operate and manage around 3,000 components. So adding an application is just about adding a new component and just building things there, adding some dependencies and ship something to production. It allows us to have more specific configurations for each case. So we can decide on specific stacks, specific deployment options, how things are integrated later on a component or a feature level. Every component, as you see, is reusable. So whenever I created that small uh, user component, it is something I can then use in any other application. And this now aligns my organization on what is a user. And whenever this entity gets updated, everyone else that's used that component gets a new version upgrade. As you saw, because deployment and standardization for so the dev workflow can also be managed by bit for each container, you don't have to worry about creating new repositories or updating CI automations and others. You can just pull components, whether they are available on BitCloud or components that run the build pipelines and deploy pipelines that you need for your stack and just compose them into the uh, bit components that you need to manage. Last and not and, and least, you can use bit in any fully repo, mono repo setup that you have. So you're not required to drop any other tools that you're using or dramatically alter your workflows. If you already have an application in a repository, you need to extend that. Uh, you don't have to try and figure out how to extend that within that repository or how to add new repositories and new bit pipelines. You can just do a very short bit in it, bit create and work from there. Essentially to get started, you just start by building any type of application service. Out of the box, uh, we have several types of applications supported for React, for Express, for Angular, and a few others as well. And always you can extend and build your own application types. Uh, for example, those application types for single spam, mode acceleration, and others that can even build bits as a sort of almost like a micro type of world, or also a way with cloud server workers and serverless function workers, a way to also build an easy way to manage and maintain all of your uh, serverless functions or micro functions. As you see, for several years now, we've been um, building bit and extending our component economy, our component ecosystem. And this got us to a point where um, with 3,000 components, new features, new capabilities just get built in those small code containers, in those bit components. And later we can decide whether we want to deploy them, whether we want to embed them in an existing application. Uh, this allows us to have a complete and full flexibility um, for whatever we want and need. Moreover, because whenever we build a new component, we make sure to create it again in a bit component form, then uh, capabilities like signing up to a newsletter is now something we can use almost like a drop-in feature in any application. So here, for example, say a question in chat, Alex is asking how to centralize uh, components if we use them in different repos, everything we're seeing with BitCloud to work. So yes, you do need to sync things for bit export to BitCloud. This allows different repositories to either use NPM to install components, or use bit import, or also other capabilities. And uh, essentially, it allows you to almost create a virtual monorepo out of your multi-repo system. Just before we end, in our case, again, we're growing our component ecosystem, our uh, component system. So for example, in our publication, in our blog, we'll create a small component that deals with everything about registering to a newsletter, and now this is just a dropping feature that we can add to any application going forward. And we don't have to think about to worry about that when that was needed. And this approach for is available for components large and small. Thank you so much for listening.